Hi, I'm Andrea Lorenz from the East Grand Forks Campbell Library, and today I'm going to show you how to do glue batik. If you picked up a kit from the library, you should have almost everything that you need, um, but if you didn't, let's run through the basic supplies. You're going to need a piece of fabric, preferably white cotton, some glue, washable glue, clear or white works just fine, a paintbrush, some acrylic paint, some water, and later on you're going to need hot water and a soft brush. This is a nail brush, but a toothbrush with soft bristles will also work fine. You're also going to need time. There are three steps to this process, and each one requires drying time. So batik is an ancient art where um, artists used wax on uncolored pieces of paper, uncolored pieces of fabric, and then dipped those fabrics in different dyes and then removed the wax to create a beautiful pattern. So we're going to do something similar, but we're going to use washable glue instead of wax. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a pattern on our piece of paper that is going to resist our dyeing using paint. So you might want to print off an image to trace because you'll be able to see through the cloth, or maybe you just want to freehand it. You know what design you want to create. So go ahead and create that design using your glue. Once your glue design is complete, you want to set this somewhere where no one is going to touch it and let it dry overnight. It needs to be dry completely before we start our next step. All right, so our design has had time to dry overnight and um, you can't really see it, but I can see it on the fabric. And so the next step is to paint it, to add in that color. So you might want to put your paint, take it out of its container and put it onto something else. Um, I like to put my paint on a Tupperware lid, an ice cream pail lid, but you could use a paper plate or a plastic plate if you would like. We do need to thin down our paint with water so that it sticks better to the cloth. If you use really thick paint when you're painting on your fabric, you might end up washing the paint away when we go to wash the glue away in our next step. So what you need is a paintbrush, your paint, some water, and more than likely you're gonna want a towel or an absorbent cloth. So I'm gonna go ahead and get painting. Wanna watch? Okay, a couple more things before we start. Make sure that wherever you're painting, you cover it before you paint. The paint is gonna bleed through the back of your painting and you don't wanna make a big mess on mom's table. So you can put down some newspaper or some plastic wrap or even some wax paper before you start painting. Don't forget that the lines that you have created, those glue lines, are going to show up white. So you can paint on them, but we are gonna wash all of that color away when we do our next step. So remember that those lines are going to end up being white. So you might have seen on my palette that I have brown and purple, but you in your kit only have white red, yellow, and blue. Luckily, those are primary colors, and you can mix them together to make almost any other color. You can mix them to make brown, red, and yellow to make orange, yellow and blue to make green, red and blue to make purple. And you can add white in there to brighten your color up or to make it a little bit lighter. So if you need a little bit more information about paint mixing, check down below in the description for some information about the color wheel.
So we've painted over all of our design. And if you want to cover the whole piece of cloth, you can. I like to do that. Um, and now we need to just let them sit and dry overnight. All right. So my fabric has completely dried. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill up my sink over here with hot water, as hot as I can get it. And I'm going to slip this in and let it sit for about an hour. Okay, so my cloth has been sitting in its water bath for about an hour. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it in its water bath and I'm going to use my soft brush to gently rub away the excess paint and the excess glue that is still there. All right, so I'm just going to lift this up. I'm going to keep it in the water. I'm just going to kind of gently rub. You can see the space get completely clear. All of the paint has come off and my design has shown through. You can see here where some of the paint I'd painted on the glue and it is kind of coming off. All right, so I'm just gonna keep doing this and you can watch. All right, so I'm gonna take this out of the water bath and if you have a lot of extra paint inside, you might want to scoop those up um, instead of letting them go down your drain. But I don't have a ton and it's pretty small. And I'm going to give this one last rinse. So you have a couple options once you are you've completely rinsed and rubbed off the glue on your batik um, you can set the color finally using either a hot iron once this is completely dry or you can just throw it in the dryer and let it run through a medium heat medium to high heat cycle and that'll help set the color if you need to wash it again um, so what I'm going to do with mine is I am probably going to sew the back a little bit together and put a wood dowel through it and hang it up. Enjoy!